We get our first look at Henry Cavill as The Witcher, one of your favorite 90s buddy cop duos are back, and we've got all the hot news coming out of BlizzCon on today's episode of Looter News. Happy Friday, everybody. It's November 2nd, 2018, and this is Looter News, your weekly recap of some of the biggest news in geek, gaming, and pop culture. I'm your host, Josh Ball. Let's get into the news, shall we? Recently, we've talked a little bit about the fact that Netflix has not only been working on a TV series based on the video game The Witcher, but that they had also casted Superman himself, Henry Cavill, to play the role. People certainly had a lot of mixed thoughts about the casting, and we've still got a ways to go before we truly find out if he's the right man for the job. This week, however, Netflix released some pictures and video footage of a hair and makeup test with Cavill suited up as Geralt, and, well... <sighs> His silky silver locks certainly can give Lekalus a run for his money if this video is any indication. Despite the fact that Cavill looks pretty badass here, keep in mind that this is just a hair and makeup test of so the final appearance may be a bit different, including Cavill showing off a bit more of Geralt's facial scruff and stubble than he appears to have in the pics and video. Don't worry though, I'm pretty sure we can all agree it's a pretty safe bet that they won't use CGI to add or remove any mustaches because we know how that goes. This first look at Cavill as Geralt is pretty interesting and brings us to our question of the week. What do you think about Cavill as Geralt? Do you think the look or the overall casting choice will work to make a great Witcher series for Netflix? Let us know what you think in our Facebook live chat right now and we're gonna pick some of the best and most creative answers to read on air at the end of today's show. Our second story this week is about an upcoming DC film that we've talked a little bit about recently, the new Birds of Prey movie. As we've previously mentioned, the film will have Margot Robbie reprising her role as Harley Quinn from Suicide Squad, in addition to Journey Smollett-Bell and Mary Elizabeth Winstead playing Black Canary and Huntress, respectively. One of the big questions surrounding the Birds of Prey film, though, has been who will be the big bad of the movie and who might be playing them. This week we got the answer as it was revealed that none other than Obi-Wan himself, Ewan McGregor, had been cast and is in final negotiations to play Black Mask, a crime kingpin who has been known to have many a tangle with Batman himself. It's definitely an interesting casting choice and while many of us here at Loot Crate are excited about the choice, we definitely find it to be a pretty intriguing one as well, mainly due to the fact that we don't often see Ewan McGregor playing a bad guy or a villain in any film that he's in, so it's going to be interesting to see how he pulls it off. We've unfortunately got a while to find out though as Birds of Prey isn't slated to be released until February 7th, 2020. Moving on, I've got just 10 words to say about this next story. We ride together, we die together, bad boys for life. Now, while I can see how you might just easily assume that I'm referring to our gang motto when my producer Chris and I saddle up for Red Dead Online, and you know, I'm not saying that it won't be, but I'm actually referring to something else long in the making that fans have been waiting 15 years for. You guessed it, it's finally confirmed Martin Lawrence and Will Smith are back for Bad Boys 3, which will simply be titled Bad Boys for Life. This is, this is real, it's happening, this is real life stuff. Both Lawrence and Smith took to Instagram yesterday to confirm it was official while taking photos and doing some Instagram video together on the beach right here in sunny Los Angeles. Now, in addition to Smith and Lawrence reprising their respective roles as Detective Mike Lowry and Marcus Burnett, original producer Jerry Bruckheimer will also be returning to the film as well. No plot details have been revealed, but it's expected to stick with the original formula of a nice mix of fun action sequences and some laughs. No word on if any other characters will be returning, but we'll surely find out when the film drops on January 17th, 2020. We're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we're going to be talking about all the hot news coming out of BlizzCon today, and then later we'll be sharing your answers from the chat about what you think about Henry Cavill as Geralt, so be sure to stick around. You have made it this far. Like me, you came up through the ranks, through hard work and sheer determination. What you are transitioning into is unlike anything you have ever experienced before. We are sending you where other soldiers dare not tread. You will win. You will defeat the enemy. You will return, and you will do it all again tomorrow. Now, you are Spartans. Welcome to Fireteam Apollo. And 
And we are back. BlizzCon began today, and boy, has it been an exciting one so far. I honestly geek out so hard on BlizzCon every year, almost as much or maybe even more so than I do for E3 or Gamescom, because I have devoted a great deal of my gaming time to Blizzard games over the last 20 plus years. So anytime I get news on Diablo, World of Warcraft, Starcraft, Overwatch, you know that I'm going to get hyped for it. But before we get to some of that huge Blizzard news, I want to shout out to Bungie and Activision Blizzard as a whole, who before BlizzCon's opening ceremony announced that Destiny 2 will be available for free for anyone from today until November 18th on PC as long as you have Battle.net. So basically, if you're on the fence with Destiny 2 and want to try it on PC, you've got two weeks to claim your free copy, so get on it, Guardians. Now, let's move on to the big BlizzCon reveals. First, we're talking news for Blizzard's MOBA Heroes of the Storm as they revealed Orphea, the first hero in the Heroes of the Storm universe that doesn't exist in any other Blizzard game. She was showcased in two super cool videos that show off her abilities, along with introducing several new cosmetic additions. Now, this is incredibly exciting for the Heroes of the Storm as it expands in their MOBA franchise in a way that has never been done for the game before. And if you're a virtual ticket holder, you'll get access to her for free to play as soon as she is available. Moving on to World of Warcraft, Battle for Azeroth has been a polarizing expansion for WoW as it has introduced players to some really exciting storytelling and lore elements with things like Sylvanas' bold strategy at the Burning of Teldrassil and the Alliance retaliating at the Battle of Lordaeron. And in my opinion, this expansion story is probably its strongest point. The Old Year raid is solid. It was an exciting world first race. And Mythic Plus has been great so far, but things like the Azerite system, uh, not so much. We'll see how the upcoming patch, Tides of Vengeance, changes or improves upon the systems and content in Battle for Azeroth. The new patch will feature a brand new raid, the Siege of Dizarlor, improvements to Mythic Plus, improvements to Azerite, and so much more. But if those additions to Battle for Azeroth weren't enough, Blizzard also announced that WoW Classic will be released next summer, which will be available to anyone who has an active WoW subscription. Words are hard. Additionally, if you're at BlizzCon or have the virtual ticket, you'll have access to the WoW Classic demo as well. Next up, we've got the amazing Warcraft 3 Reforged announcement, which was a massive reveal that I was not expecting, and I feel like most people weren't expecting it either. For those of you out there that don't know, World of Warcraft, the enormous MMORPG that's it's based on the incredibly successful real-time strategy series Warcraft. And Warcraft 3 was really the catalyst that helped create the world that we've spent the last 15 years exploring in the world of Warcraft. Warcraft 3 Reforged is a full-on remake of the game with new textures, graphics, 4K enabled, new maps, new units, and so on. And anyone that loves the OG real-time strategy of Warcraft, this is definitely something to be on the lookout for. Now, I do have to say, not everything hit the mark for me for BlizzCon this year, and I was anxiously awaiting big news for Diablo, which is probably my favorite Blizzard franchise, despite not having many meaningful new content updates or a new game in several years. Fans, myself included, were hyped when it was revealed that Diablo had the final word in the BlizzCon opening ceremony. However, I can't help but be a bit deflated with the announcement of Diablo Immortal, a mobile-only Diablo game that bridges the gap story-wise between the end of Diablo 2 and Diablo 3. This has to be a disappointment for most fans who are expecting a remaster or a flat-out remake for Diablo 1 or Diablo 2 or even Diablo 4 or the fabled Diablo MMO. Now, I'm managing my expectations here. Mabel will end up really blowing me away and being super awesome, but I think I would have preferred seeing Immortal get the next-gen gaming experience over the mobile one, but time will tell. Now, finally, I want to give a special mention to Overwatch. Now, not only do they continue to kick ass and take names in the first-person shooter and esports world, but they also introduced another incredible animated short called Reunion, featuring everyone's favorite outlaw, Jesse McCree, and the 29th character to the roster, Ash. Something that I really want to highlight, though, is the money that Overwatch raised for the Breast Cancer Research Foundation via the Pink Mercy skin. Over $12.7 million. That's absolutely amazing. And I want to personally send a thank you to Blizzard, to the Overwatch team, and to everyone who participated in that event. See, Mom, video games really can change the world. Now, we've got one more quick break, but when we come back, we're going to be reading your answers from chat about your thoughts so far on Henry Cavill as Geralt in the new Witcher series. So do not go away. Autumn is upon us, and as the leaves change, so does this month's theme. As we reluctantly put our Halloween costumes away for the year, we're breaking out the beakers and Bunsen burners for Laboratory, our theme for November. We've used the scientific method to find the best gear and goods, and the results are in. This month, we've got Westworld, Bioshock, 
Better Call Saul, and more. So get ready to experience the perfect formula of exciting items, including, of course, our monthly t-shirt and pin. In this month's theme, Laboratory. Head on over to LootCrate.com and sign up for your crate today. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. At the top of the show, we asked you what you thought so far about Henry Cavill as Geralt in the upcoming Witcher series on Netflix, and we have got your answers. First up, we've got David True, who says he was Superman. It would make sense for him to be the super dot 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 man. Um, I think I see where you're going with that there, David. Uh, well done. Anyway, Kat Nelson next up says Netflix has been pretty good so far on their self-produced content. So I'm cautiously optimistic that Cavill, the makeup team and a script and the script writers and directors will pull this off. I agree. I, I, I believe that Cavill will be the man for the job. I'm very excited. I'm a huge Witcher fan. So if anybody was going to be an naysayer, it would be me. And then last but certainly not least, Samantha Burgess says, I think they should have cast Josh Brolin for the Witcher. Henry is too pretty. I could, I could see that. Personally, I was on the, the train with a lot of other people, uh, and I wanted to see Mads Mikkelsen, uh, but basically I just want to see Mads Mikkelsen read the phone book to me. Anyway, thank you for those answers. Uh, before we go, we also want to touch on a couple of things. Oh, hold on. I'm not ready for that one just yet. Can you just scroll, oh, scroll me just, just yeah. a tad? Before we go, we also want to take a second, a, give a quick shout out to our friends at Mixer.com who just launched season two this week, a refresh of the streaming platform with a ton of awesome new features that continue to give Twitch a literal run for their money. Hats off to the Mixer team. You guys have done great work so far and made amazing strides in the world of streaming. That's going to do it for this week's Lunar News. Be sure to come back next Friday at 2 p.m. Pacific to join us live at Facebook.com slash Loot Crate for your recap of next week's top geek gaming pop culture news. Additionally, be sure to also check out and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Loot Crate. See our latest episodes of our trivia show, Educated, and our awesome theme and product reveal videos that we do there. You can also follow us on Twitch and on Mixer, twitch.tv slash Loot Crate and mixer.com slash Loot Crate, respectively, to know when we go live for our gaming live streams and other fun events and giveaways that we do there. Now, I've got one more uh, special thing that I want to do. Chris, can you put the cam are you able to put the camera on yourself real quick for the fans watching us from home? He's not set up for it. I wanted you to see his face because Chris has just celebrated his sixth anniversary with Loot Crate. We literally could not be here without him. I love him. He's an incredible friend, an incredible producer. I'm a huge fan of him. That's the guy, this guy. A uh, big thank you to Chris for everything that he's done in the last six years. And hey, Chris, here's to six more, you know? Anyway, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that was your Looter News. I'm Josh Ball. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next week for an all-new Looter News Live. Shaboom!